Allah. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Allahu la ilaha illahu. There's nothing that is worthy of worship except for Allah. Where does the worthy come from? The worthy comes, this word worthy comes from the uh, la that's in that phrase. That la is called Allah and nafi lil jins. Without getting technical and all of that, it just means that this phrase is requiring a description. And Ahlul Sunnah, they believe that that description is La ilaha bihaqqin illallah. That there is nothing that is worthy of worship except for Allah Azza wa Jal. And as such, we include the worthy there in the phrase. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illahu, al hay al qayyum. Al hay and al qayyum together, these two names together, some scholars have held it to be that this is the greatest name of Allah. Ismullah al a'zam, al hay al qayyum. Because the Prophet وسلم, he says that Allah, the, His greatest name, is in Surah Al Baqarah and in Surah Taha and in Surah Ali Imran. And you'll find that Al Hay Al Qayyum is in all three of these. And so, this concept of Allah, La ilaha illahu Al Hay Al Qayyum, and the scholars, they looked at these two names, Al Hay and Al Qayyum, and they said that all of the names of Allah, they come from these two names, Al Hay and Al Qayyum. You pick a name of Allah, and it's going to return back either to al hay or it's going to return back to al qayyum. What does al hay mean? There are two main meanings that you want to take away from al hay, the ever living. One is that Allah Azza wa Jal's life is perfect. It is not afflicted by sleep or slumber. There's never a time when he was not alive. There's never a time where he will not be alive. Allah's life is perfect. That's number one. Number two is that he is the giver of life to everything else. Allah is al-hay, the bestower of life. And Allah Azza wa is al-hay in and of himself. What is the benefit then? Or what is the main takeaway from knowing that Allah Azza wa is al-hay? Allah knows best of the greatest benefits of knowing that Allah Azza wa is al-hay is to depend on him alone. Is to depend on him alone. Because he is Al-Hay. Allah says, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيْءِ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتْ Allah says, depend on Al-Hay. Depend on the ever-living, the one who does not die. There is not a single person in this world that you depend on, that you trust in, that you have hope in, except that at some point in time, they're going to leave. So what are you going to do then? The Prophet ﷺ, in one of the most difficult years of his life, Am al huzn if not the most difficult life, he had his two greatest pillars of support swept out from under him. Some of the scholars said within months. Some of the scholars said within days. He lost Abu Talib and he lost Khadija radiallahu anha. What's the lesson of that? Depend on Allah. Depend on Allah. And so the Sahaba, they learned that message. And so their greatest pillar of support was not their wife or their uncle. Their greatest pillar of support, the Sahaba, all of them together, was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself. And so when their world got flipped upside down, when Anas ibn Malik says, the darkest day I ever experienced was the day that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away. And Umar ibn Khattab is going off in a rage saying, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has not died. And Ali ibn Abi Talib's legs gave out from underneath him and everybody is in a state of confusion and bewilderment. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu simply has to stand up in front of everyone and say, Hey, man kana minkum ya'budu Muhammadan, fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah, fa inna Allah hayyun, la yamut. Whoever of you worships Muhammad, you were depending on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's who you had all of your eggs in their basket, in that basket, then Muhammad has passed away. But whoever of you worships Allah, depends on Allah, inna Allah hayyun, la yamut. Allah is ever living and he does not die. So Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum. Al-Qayyum is the one who everyone else depends on him. He is Al-Qayyum. He's the one who maintains every soul. As Ibn Abbas says, Al-Qayyum is the maintainer of every soul. And so Allah is ever living in and of himself and he's the one who maintains everything else. And as such, the argument is that Al-Hay Al-Qayyum is of the greatest names of Allah. And another very strong position is that it is Allah Himself or that name, Lafz al Jalala, al Hayy al Qayyum. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. There is no slumber or sleep that can affect him, and that is an extension of Allah being al Hayy. The Prophet ﷺ says, Inna Allah la yanam. 
ولا ينبغي له أن ينام. Allah does not sleep, and it is not befitting for Allah that he sleeps. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. What's the next? Okay, just checking. له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. Allah says to him belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth. Everything that is in the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah Azza wa Jalla. So who exactly are you asking things from? Tomorrow, every single one of us is going to go and we have lots of things that we need to take care of. Everything we've got, every single one of us has problems. Every single one of us. But who are you going to ask first? And so, one of the main, يعني, Ayat al-Kursi is the greatest name, uh, the greatest verse of Allah and you will find that it is filled with the names of Allah. That's all Ayat al-Kursi is. It's just talking about who Allah is. And the reason why Allah Azza wa Jal mentions for us the names of Allah in the Quran is he says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا Allah says to him, belong the great names, so call upon him by those names. And so who are you going to call? لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاتُ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Allah says, who is the one who can intercede on his behalf except by his permission?